Welcome to Untethered Fridays. And I am eating. I've been eating some morning because I'm a business lady. And I needed a bite. So, right today, we're going to be having a really interesting conversation. And Rob and Thomas might join us later, which would be very exciting. But Thursday nights, I, um, I join Robin for uh, her chakra class. And we're doing the heart chakra right now. And there were some really amazing <coughs> revelations yesterday. And I'd like to share some of them with you. Um, one is about, there's several, there are several, uh, about vulnerability and um, what it means and, and what it facilitates. And one of the things she asked, uh, we're talking about childhood and she's like, what? And when you were like, you know, four, um, four or five, what made you happy? Like whatever comes to mind. And the first thing that came to my mind were underroos because underroos are awesome. Um, and we all laughed about it. I mean, an underroos for anybody who don't, doesn't know, anybody who did not grow up in the eighties in America, underroos are these, uh, this little set of underpants and, uh, like little undershirts. Really, they're more like pajamas. Um, that are superheroes. So you could have like Wonder Woman under ruse or Spider-Man under ruse or Superman or Batman or whoever. You could have Star Wars under ruse. Those were awesome. Who doesn't want three, you know, R2D2 under ruse? I certainly want R2D2 under ruse. So we're talking about that and laughing on how they actually have adult uh, under ruse now. Um, so we were discussing like, what that brings to mind. And Robin was saying, um, you know, when she wore underoos, because the two of us are the only ones in the group that grew up in the 80s. Um, when she wore underoos, they, she felt invincible. And I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, that is how I felt as well. <laughs> I felt invincible. It was really, really awesome. And it was exciting. Um, and, you know, I was kind of thinking, there's just been a lot going on right now. Um, and I was thinking about like why, you know, we're talking about within this, this conversation, we're discussing what your heart really wants because we're, we're on heart chakra. See ya. Um, we're on heart chakra. So we're talking about what the heart really wants. And this is what came up for me, invincibility. Um, and that was a very, very interesting observation for me personally. Um, it was about, there's, there was an incident that happened in our house uh, over the week. And, um, it was something that scared me. And, um, I, I, like, it makes sense that I would want to be invincible, right? I would want peace. I'd want to be feeling like strong. Um, and I just kind of thought about that and how, since I was young, that really, I mean, other than, <laughs> other than my moments in my underoos, um, that, uh, I didn't feel invincible. I never felt invincible. I never felt strong, right? And that's because I'm an incredibly vulnerable person. <laughs> Not vulnerable in the sense of like weak or, you know, like it's just, I'm just someone who, I just go through life open and um, feeling. And I'm always, I, it's just, regardless of the fact, I mean, a lot of times I don't know what I'm feeling, you know, but it's there <laughs> and it expresses itself. Um, and, that's always been the way it is. I've always been a very sensitive child, very, some people call it melodramatic, but I would go with passionate, <laughs> passionate and sensitive. And um, when you're a kid in an Irish Catholic family in the eighties, um, you, that's not, <clears throat> not useful. It's not a useful thing um, to be vulnerable because people, I mean, you're, you become a target, right? So that always kind of was always an issue for me. And I always, you know, I have a, when I, anyway, that's a different story. Let's put that aside. Um, so my vulnerability has always been a thing throughout my life. I've always been open about my emotions. There's just been no hiding them, right? They're just there and I have to feel them. Um, and if I try and if I try not to, or if I try to cover them up or whatever, bottle them up, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
and it's exhausting. And I finally came to a point in my adult life where I'm like, I just, I'm not gonna even try. <laughs> like, it's just stupid to try. I mean, that's exhausting. And if someone else has a problem with my emotions, then that's their problem, right? Because you're told when you're younger that it's not cool um, to express emotions, especially in the way that I do. <laughs> um, so we're talking about that. And I was talking about how, you know, I was never, I never felt invincible because I always felt like I, I was going through the world as a, like a, a raw nerve. And as we're discussing vulnerability, um, someone said uh, vulnerability is a precursor for connection. You can't have connection with another human being unless you're, you're willing to let yourself be vulnerable. Um, you know, you're willing to, you know, you can't, you can't have a relationship with anybody, like a true relationship with anybody, if you're not willing to have your heart broken. Um, because, you know, that if you're not, if you're not in the, putting yourself in that position, then you're not connecting. You know, you're not allowing a certain depth of connection, a certain depth of feeling um, to be associated with the person. And that's just not something I am capable of. <laughs> I have to always, you know, it's just, it's, I lead with my heart. And um, since we were discussing that, I really, it was like a light bulb for me. And like, that's why people like me because I'm already there and people have a hard time getting vulnerable. Um, and because I'm always, always, always there, that gives them permission to be there around me. And um, and also it, it, it gives them like I'm already ready for, ready for connection. Like if you want to plug in, plug in, right? I'm here. If you're if you're if you're into it, plug in and we'll have a we'll have a nice deep connection. Um so that was a huge 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 uh a huge thing for me to realize uh and it goes along with the idea of vulnerability is my superpower, which is a a group that I am a Facebook group that I'm involved in and I haven't been for a while, but it, I got to get back to it. Um so we're discussing that. And uh, another thing we were discussing was self-forgiveness. And that is what I really wanna talk about um, right now after I take a sip of this coffee. I'll wait for Robin, hopefully Robin will come on and I can, I can have another bite of my toast. So forgiveness of self, right? Um, Robin brought up a uh, it's not exactly a prayer. It was a um, just a quote about forgiving yourself um, and forgiving yourself for being, for not being the person that you wish you had been, for past actions, for a, a ton of stuff that like, it just resonated with me so much because I spent a lot of my life hating myself and, um, and just really just punishing myself for I mean and honestly there are things that people probably wouldn't even think like they're like why is that a problem <laughs> but you know my thing and I've, I've spoken a little bit about this before was that as a child and as as a young adult I had a lot of potential and I could have gone very far but I stopped myself I sabotaged I self-sabotaged a bunch of times and I got very angry at myself and I fell into depression Hell into depression. I worked my way into it. However, I, I I take I take responsibility for it. I'm totally accountable for my depression. Not blaming, but I own it. And that was another thing that we we're talking about. Uh, God, there's so much to cover. Um, but I wasn't able to really take any advances in my mental health until I was able to start on the road. I mean, not not finish because I'm still working on it and I think to a degree we all are um on on forgiving ourselves and that is a huge deal for people who have who, who are depressed um and that's why I would like to discuss this because I have discussed this before but it is such an important topic and even if we discuss it again and again and again there's always something new to be gained so um I'll tell a brief story when I was depressed for quite a few, uh, quite a few years, like decades, I always had depressive tendencies as a child, you know, and I went in and out of, like, some, honestly, looking back, severe depressions. Um, but there was a really long sustained one up until, um, up until 
COVID when I was actually able to sit down and not worry about money, which guys, that's a problem in our society. It's a big problem in our society. We are so focused because it's so, it's so necessary for survival. We're so focused on money and if we don't have it, that's all we think about, or at least that's all I thought about. Um, where, where, where am I gonna get the next, you know, how am I gonna pay for the next bill? How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do that? And it's, you, you don't have the space to think. You don't have the bandwidth. Um, you just don't stop. You, you don't see a, a way out. It just becomes helpless and hopeless. Um, uh, so during COVID, when I had the chance to stop, lean back and say, all right, I don't have to worry about money right now. I had the chance to start uh, working on myself. And what that was, I started, you know, really examining, again, journaling, um, my experiences, my thoughts, facing some things that I hadn't faced before or I hadn't been willing to uh, face. And you know, yeah, okay, I'll admit it, it takes bravery, but I had reached a point of like, this isn't working and I have to fix it. Like this has got to change. And I recognized that it all stemmed from the fact that I had such hatred for myself and was so angry at myself. And that in order to move forward in my life, like that was keeping me 100% stuck. I couldn't move forward. I was frozen in life because I just blamed myself and hated myself and was punishing myself all the time. Like every day with every thought, I just punished myself and I punished myself and I punished myself. And I realized like, this isn't like, I need to stop. This is, this is not working. And regardless of whether or not I think I deserve to be forgiven for whatever it is, you know, basically so, so sabotaging my life, ruining everything. And you know, there's a lot, there's a lot, um, there's a lot of, of stuff that goes along that. And that's something we can discuss at a different time. Uh, but I realized that I had to forgive myself and I had no idea how to do that. And, um, I didn't think I deserved it, but I recognized that whether or not I thought I deserved it, I was not going to get any anywhere in life if I didn't do it. So um, I decided that I would have to forgive myself and I didn't know how to go about doing it. And one night I had been actually, um, there's this essential oil blend called Forgive that I get from doTERRA and that's, I love it. I love it. And I've been diffusing it a lot. Um, in those days and um, all of a sudden I had this like breakthrough and I was sobbing and I was praying and talking to myself like out loud I mean thank god like I had five weeks during that summer where I was just by myself in in our apartment and um, I was just able to just completely break it down for myself and I had this like not breakdown, not a, not like a, you know, hysterical breakdown, but like I just, I started crying and crying and talking to myself, like how can I possibly forgive, be forgiven? How can you possibly, I had like, there's two people in this conversation in my brain. You know, it's the punisher, the person who was punishing and the punishee, the person who was getting punished. And that punisher part was so angry at the punishee that they just kept going and they felt like that's what they had to do. Um, and, you know, so the, the punishy part of me, the part of me that felt so sorry, so sorry, and like, and just desperate um, because of all the torture I'd, I'd put her through. Um, you know, but at the time I was still, that was, that was the, the punishy person was the, was the, was the one that was wrong. Um, I had such hatred for myself, such hatred. And, uh, and that part of me was speaking to the other part of me, like out loud, loud and just sobbing and saying, you know, how can you forgive me? How can I possibly be forgiven for this? I, I, I spent 10 years, 10 years at this point. I ruined, I ruined your career. I ruined your dreams, like everything that you worked for. I ruined it all. I sabotaged it and I never stopped and I just kept ruining everything and then now it's 10 years later 
and I've taken 10 years away from your life. <laughs> 10 years that you could have been spending doing so many other things. Um, and how do you forgive someone for that? Like, I, that's unforgivable. How could I possibly be forgiven for something like that? Um, and I was just sobbing. And I was like, well, you know, right now I'm talking to myself, so I might as well go look at myself. So I, I went to the mirror in the bathroom and I was looking at myself and I was just like, like how how can I how can I apologize? How can how can this be forgiven? I don't know how I, how to do that. And then I thought to myself, like, okay, well, let's put this outside of me. Let's be objective about it. And um, how would I go about forgiving someone else? Is there a way that if someone else had done this, if someone else had taken 10 years of my life and ruined my career, could I forgive that person? <laughs> and it's like, no, <laughs> I, I couldn't. But um, I knew that I had to. So I asked myself, what, how would I go about, if this were the case, that some, it was, was, was someone outside of me, how would I go about forgiving that person? because they're really sorry. Like that's something I had to realize, right? Like that person, that part of me is so sorry, so sorry. And so just like, that's all they were, were sorry. And they believed they did, did deserve this punishment that I was constantly, constantly doing to myself. Like 100% believe they, they, they weren't protesting the punishment because they, they believed that they deserved it, right? They were just like, yes, <laughs> this is what I deserve. And um, and that that's just like so sorry. And in that moment, I was able to have a little bit of compassion for myself. And um, that was that was like, okay, <clears throat> the way I would start, I'd be still very angry. And it's like, okay, well, I can accept that I can still be very angry. I don't have to just magically not be angry. You know, because that's not going to happen. I'm not going to magically not be angry at myself. I'm not going to magically forgive myself and be like, you're great. It's, that's just not how it works. And that was a huge realization. Um, so I'm going to encourage you guys to remember that if you are in need of forgiving yourself, it doesn't happen all at once. Um, and you're not just, oh, I'm not angry about it anymore. Like you are, you continue to be angry about it and you will be. I mean, unless something magic happens. I don't know. This is my experience though. I'm just telling you about my experience. I can't tell you what your experience is. I can tell you about my journey. And hopefully, as we all know, this is why I do these videos. Hopefully that will help you on yours. So, so I, 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 uh, I asked myself like, how would I forgive this person? And the first thing that came to me was like, well, the first step is to apologize, right? So I spent a long time apologizing to myself in the mirror, outside of the mirror, just crying and crying and crying and crying and sobbing. I mean, like really sobbing from the, the depths of my soul, like just almost, I mean, wailing, really, I was wailing um, and just saying, I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't know how you can forgive me, but I'm so sorry that I did this. I'm so sorry. There's, I know there's nothing I can do to make up for it. And I just, if I could take it back, I would, but I can't. And I don't know what to do to make up for it. There's nothing I can do. Um, you know, and then after I had said sorry for a while, <laughs> and I was looking in the mirror, um, the other part of me kind of came out and was like, well, look, I don't forgive you <laughs> and I can't, you have to, you know, you lost my trust and you have to win it back. And that's how, that's how this starts, right? I gotta, I, I have to win my own trust back. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do. That takes a long time to build trust, especially after you've lost it for on such an egregious thing. I was like, well, how do I start to build it up? It's, and the answer was repent, right? Good thing I learned in Catholic school or Catholic Catholicism. You apologize, you confess, and you repent. And what that means is turning away from sin, right? however you want to term sin. And um, not just doing that, but also, you know, working to make it better. I don't remember the exact definition, but repenting is 
is about not just stopping what you're doing and being sorry, but about making amends. Um, and not just to making amends, but behaving in a way as, as almost an ethical and a moral obligation to behave in a way that's the opposite and that will, that will rectify the situation. And that was so scary because I was like, I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't know, I don't trust myself to do that. But if I say it, if I say it to myself right now, if I promise it to myself right now, and I don't come through on this promise, that is gonna be the death of me. So I was really scared, but I looked at myself and I promised myself, I'm going to do better. Like not just do better, but what, what measurable things can I do to start repenting, to start, again, there's no making up for it, but to start making amends, I guess, is the best way to say it. And it's like, well, number one, never do that again. Okay, I got that, never do that again. Um, and number two, get us the fuck out of the situation. Like you got us here, you're poor, you're broke. You know, like you just, you have no um, prospects on the horizon. You know, there's just, and you can't, the, all the life that you dreamed of for your entire life that you knew was within your grasp that you just threw away, you get that back. <laughs> like you can't, you can't make up for the past 10 years, but you can, you can moving forward, you can make it good. And that's what you owe me. And that's what I said to myself. I was like, okay, well, I guess that's what I gotta do. And, um, you know, of course it didn't happen overnight and it's still a constant practice. Um, and that's something we were talking about last night about practice. Um, but it's something I, 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 I promised to myself and it was, I, I never, the other thing there too is like, I could have said the first time that I screwed up. I see, I knew, I knew I couldn't do it. I knew I couldn't do it. But that again is one of the things that got me to where I was, right? Like hating myself so much and not trusting myself so much that I would just give up because, well, I know that I can't do this. I mean, that's so, well, talk about a self-fulfilling self prophecy, right? Like, I can't do this. Well, no, you can't if you're saying that you can't because you're not gonna do it. Um, so I had to keep trying and I had to build that muscle. I had to keep going and going and going and trusting that if I don't trust myself now that I can do it and I will do it in the future and that it's coming and that I just have to take it moment by moment and work on it in that way, you know what I mean? Like every moment, try and be better. You know, and I've done that my whole life is try to be better all the time, but this was like, this is gonna be work. Like we gotta work at this. And that's how I've been able to, to build my trust. And it's been, what, two years, two, almost three? No, 2020 to 21, 2020 to 21, that's August. 2021. So no, it's two years, right? It'll be two years this summer. Um, where it, I'm still working on it, right? I'm still disappointing myself, but I'm still getting up after that and, and continuing to work at it and strengthening that muscle. And that's how it works. I just want to put that out there. You're not going to be perfect at it. My experience is... <laughs> And since we're none of us are perfect, right? None of us are going to do, especially, especially when we've gotten ourselves into this mess to begin with. It's not like it happened overnight, right? This depression, long long term depression, like long term extreme clinical depression, doesn't happen overnight. It happens in a series of events, but also a series of just a, it's a it's a gradual thing. It gets bigger and bigger, and you don't notice it until like all of a sudden you're like, I can't live like this anymore. <laughs> and, and you start climbing out. And again, I, I always have this, this picture in my head of me climbing out of a hole. And when I first started climbing, I'm like, oh my God, I'm out of this hole. Like I reached a ledge. I'm like, I'm out. And then I'm, uh, then I started, you know, I had to keep climbing and I'm like, oh, I'm not out. And then I reached another ledge. Okay, I'm out. I'm like, no, I'm not out. You know what I mean? Like I, I look down and I realize I look up. There's so much more 
there's so there's such a long way to go keep climbing but then every as i get out i look back down it's like wow that was a lot deeper than i thought it was <laughs> and um i just want to share that with you because you get used to those things you get used to feeling that way and it doesn't feel like it's that big a deal until you start feeling better and you're like that was terrible and you feel a little bit more better and you're like that was really terrible and then you feel better than that and you're like that was that was awful and it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and you're not going to get out of that quickly most likely. I mean, maybe you'll have a spiritual experience. Maybe you'll have a near death experience and it does just, psh. but for the most part, you got to work at it and you got to be forgiving of yourself when you fail because failing, right? You can fail forward. Failing is part of learning. And that's, so one has to be grateful for one's failures because every time you fail, you learn something new and bringing it back to gratitude right so one can be grateful for everything in life every trial tribulation tribulation um all of it one can be grateful for everything because one can one can find good in it maybe not find good in the event excuse me but get something good out of it learn something advance um and i honestly i've done a lot of growing over the past week because of this event that happened in the house i um i've learned to stand up for myself i learned a lot more self-respect um i realized that i do think a lot of myself like i do think i'm great like the things that will come out of my mouth i'm this i'm that i'm this i'm that um i didn't need to prove it to him i needed to prove it to myself and that's what i did i kept talking about it and as it came out of my mouth, like, I realized, like, no, I'm really great. <laughs> I'm a really great person. This is awesome. Um, so there was that. I learned to stand up for myself, which is something that I've never been very good at. Um, now the beeping is happening. That's going to be irritating. Um, you know, uh, I learned to set boundaries. And I learned that I need to set boundaries way before it gets out of control. Um, I learned that I can stand and be terrified, but also stand and be firm, even though my heart's like doing all these like weirdest feelings, guys, these were like, these were feelings where I'm like, oh, wow, these are weird. These are interesting feelings. These are terrifying. This is terrifying. Um, but I still was able to do it. And when I was able to, I mean, I wasn't perfect at it. Certainly not. Um, but. It was, it was another big step, you know, and, and I almost want it to happen again so I can practice and get good at it, you know what I mean? Really get good at like, instead of being taken and wanting to run away, run away and, and stuff like that, being good at it and not just being able to stand there and answer, but also be able to think <laughs> and speak in a different way. You know what I mean? Like, cause I, I, stand, I stood strong I had answers for everything. I mean, I just knew I was right, right? And um, it it worked. I just, I'd like to be even stronger next time. Um, so that's what I have to say with that. And uh, I'm going to go eat some food and then go back to my meetings that I have to do today. And uh, I'm gonna keep with me as I always want to. Um, the same thing that I'm about to say, say, say to you, and I will find a better segue. I gotta, I gotta sit and think about it. I gotta take some time. But anyway, I just want to remind all of you that you can always choose to have a grateful day.